The public loved the Unimate, but industrial orders did not pour in. It took Unimation 14 years to make a profit. But there was another market that saw the potential of robotics, the Japanese. Theirs was a nation in need of a labor force, and they immediately embraced the potential of robots. The Japanese outclassed us in quality and cost and manufacturing and features, and that's where the difference is made. If I talk to an American executive, they wanted to know how fast they're getting their money back. Uh, the Japanese would look long range. Kawasaki and Unimation formed a joint venture. The Japanese quickly took the lead in the robotics industry. While American industrial robot companies struggle for survival, at universities around the country, researchers work to make robots smarter. At MIT, Norbert Wiener invented the science of cybernetics, a word coined from the Greek meaning governor. Rather than being run by complex computer programs, these cybernetic creatures appear to respond like simple animals and learn just by reacting to a variety of basic stimuli, such as light. Independently of Wiener, British neurophysiologist Gray Walter created the famous cybernetic turtles in the late 1940s. These robots experienced the world with photo tubes, microphones, and contact switches, and could navigate through the environment. One of the most impressive of all cybernetic animals was known as the Beast. It was built in the early 60s at Johns Hopkins University's Applied Physics Lab. The environment in which this vehicle is to live is that of the halls of the Applied Physics Laboratory. There it must cope with the various obstructions around the wall while seeking out sufficient power outlets from which to keep the battery charged, which are located in the lower part of the body section. The beast's goal was continuous motion and unassisted survival in this environment. Equipped with sonar, a photocell eye, and tactile sensors, it managed very well. During the working day, most office doors are left open. It is desirable not to allow the device to enter these offices and must, therefore, sense the door jam, bridge the open door, and regain acquisition with the wall. It could even prevent itself from falling down stairwells. When trapped, it went into a vibratory mode to shake itself free. The beast had no real brain, just sensors, but its electronic behavior patterns allowed it to survive in the world. This bottom-up approach of achieving the bare rudiments of intelligence with simple models of animals was soon eclipsed in the early 1960s as a new field took hold, artificial intelligence. Robots will return in a moment here on the History Channel. Head out on the highway Looking for adventure And whatever comes our way Oh yeah Here and God are gonna make it Ow! Born to be Are two computers that are quote unquote perfect for you. The one on your left was built two months ago. The one on your right hasn't been built yet. Gateway wants to speak with you first. How fast do you want to go? Movie buff? How many kids? Any future Rembrandts? Now, which one is quote unquote perfect for you? The perfect computer can be anything you want it to be, starting at $999 all the way up to your dream system. Call 1 800 Gateway and get more out of the box. Secret shortcuts, back roads, winding trails. Thankfully, a truck that appreciates your sense of direction. A truck with four available suspensions that handles even when fully loaded. The GMC Sonoma, created with nearly 100 years of GMC commitment and a devotion to true truck capability. 
Get your hands on a 98 Sonoma and drive away with $2,000 cash back or 0.9% APR financing. The Sonoma from GMC. Sunday is Guts and Glory Night. Discover the dramatic history of women and guns, followed by how the Viet Cong stayed hidden in plain sight and won the war. Then Arthur Kent investigates JFK's death. How did the files on the assassination go missing, and why? Guts and Glory Sunday presents tales of the gun, sworn to secrecy, history undercover. Tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific, on the History Channel, where the past comes alive. Bjorn E. his name could have been a household word if he'd only gotten out of his boat. From the archives of the History Channel, this is Time Lab 2000. Bjorn is lost at sea. He's headed for Greenland, but storms throw him so far off course he misses his destination. He finds himself staring at the coast of a totally unfamiliar land, modern-day Labrador. If he had the spirit of a Chris Columbus, it might be a defining moment in exploration. But Bjorni is intent on going home, not going down in history. So without even leaving his boat, he turns right around and heads back for Greenland. Years later, he tells his tale to a friend who retraces the course. And so Leif Erikson stakes his claim to becoming the first European to walk on the American continent. Sorry, Bjorni. For the History Channel, I'm Sam Waterston. The History Channel now returns to robots. There, miss. You see the heterodynes are feeding back into the stimulus reaction activators, causing non-synapse of the motor control resistor units. Oh, that's good. No, lady, that's bad. But your regenerative circuits are tuned asynchronously, and that causes concatenation in the intermediate amplifiers. Well, that's bad, isn't it? No, that's good. From now on, I don't think there'll be the slightest trouble with your robot. Your domestic problems are completely solved. No one ever thought it was going to be easy, but building an intelligent robot remained the holy grail that challenged and tormented some of the greatest scientific minds for the latter half of this century. The advent of digital computers in the 1940s suggested the way forward. In America, ENIAC, the first supercomputer, was a giant brain composed of a room full of vacuum tubes. It was built in 1946 to calculate the trajectories of artillery shells. At the same time in Britain, mathematical genius Alan Turing was working on the Turing machine, a theoretical device used to process equations without human direction. The idea of mimicking human mental abilities through electronics was born. His goal, as was the goal of all of the people who started in the field, was to achieve human level intelligence. And he thought that computers would be able to play the imitation game, that is, would be able to successfully pretend to be human over a teletype line by the year 2000. At a conference at Dartmouth College in 1956, Professor John McCarthy coined the term artificial intelligence, or AI. This conference inspired AI researchers at MIT, such as Marvin Minsky, to lay the groundwork for computerized thinking machines. They devised programs that could play chess, recognize different shapes, and solve logistical problems. Claude Shannon created a remarkable experiment called the Mouse in the Maze that appeared to learn. Driven by a motorized electric magnet, its path was recorded by a computer that remembered only the successful parts of the journey. On its second attempt, the mouse finds the target easily in a fraction of the time. In 1963, McCarthy moved to Stanford University and established the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. One of the major things that 